There we go. So lean in on your front. It was your right, correct? Right shoulder. And when you feel it, by the way, do you feel it more like in a point up here or is it broad? It's here, actually, right now. Right there? Yeah. Okay, lay on your front for me. And then how long have you been going to school here? Uh, in February. February? Okay. Are you doing like, are they doing like one day a week or two days a week or something? They're here four days a week. Four days a week. But two, or two days of science and then two days How's this? of manipulation. It actually hurts. <laughs> yeah. Right there in infraspinatus, I wanted to check this. And then I don't want to tickle you, but how's this right here in your rotator cuff? Her teres, yeah, her whole shoulder uh, through here is probably problematic. Is that too much? No. No? Not too much? Okay. So just to cushion a little bit, I'm going to give her a towel. How's that right there? Is it too much? No. Okay. Now, here's the thing. It can be intense, but if it's painful, just let me know and I'll back off, okay? Okay. Do you want a little more pressure there? A little bit more. A little bit more? Okay. How's that? Uh, that's fine. Is that too much? Mm-mm. Okay. I'm going to press on her back just a little bit as well. Um, lots of use of my knees and feet. I'm going to reach across her back to the opposite side here. Is that too much where my knee is? No. Okay. Do you want more pressure that way? Oh. Okay. Yeah, it is in for spinatus a little bit. Right there is too much. Ooh. You doing okay? A little less. A little less. There we go. What about back off that way? Is that okay? Way better. There we go. Thank you for letting me know. And I'm not trying to give you too much. Just tell me if it's too much, okay? Mm -hmm. Better there. It is. There we go. Big in breath for me. And exhale. Ah, uh, one more. Up. In your shoulder? Uh, in your back? I don't know where. I nah, felt I something yeah. pop. Yeah, right? <laughs> something let go. And exhale. Ah, uh, so I'm going to slowly back off. How did that feel? A little better? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do a little bit more, but I just want to. How's this? If you all else fails, you just beat the client into the mat. Does the arm feel a little better? Yeah. Just in that little bit? Okay. Now we're going to change it up. Oh, opposite side. You tell me right there. Is that too much? Okay. Now, do you want more pressure medial or lateral? Medial. More medial right there? Yeah. What about there? Is that too much? No, I'm pretty good. Okay. A little, little more pressure? Uh -huh. That's good. Or a little more medial? A little more pressure. Right there? Yeah. What if I give you some jostle? Is that good? It feels good. Say it again? It feels good. Okay. Now, what if I give you this? Oh. <laughs> now, how stressful is this on my hands? This is most of my body weight through my knee. The knee is, is similar to the elbow, but it's bigger and broader, right? You can work on big burly guys and give them pressure. Is that too much? Oh, that's fine. Okay. If it helps, I've felt this before. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> in, in, you know, there's an empath here. In, oh. Oh. Right there. More there. See how she went nonverbal on me? I had to check in just to make sure you okay? Yeah. Okay. Is it a little bit better right there? Yeah. There we go. A little more? No. No more than that? No more. No more than that? Just this? No, no more of the pressure. Oh, no more pressure. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I give you some mobilization, how's this? Oh, uh, that's fine. No more than that? A little more right there? <laughs> Scoot down for me a little bit. Uh, and I'm just kind of giving her like a quick once over. Can you put that right shoulder up, like turn your head to the side? Then no, no, lay on your side. Lay put your side. put your right arm up. Put your right arm up. Oh, up. Sorry, so face I'm that way. No, you're fine. Lift cool. your head for me and scoot up this way on the mat just a little. 
There we go. Now lay on your side, put this arm up. There we go. Now I'm gonna scoot this over just a little bit. Sorry, I don't mean to block you, I just need some room here. You still gonna be able to see? Yes, I'll, I'll stand up. This right here, how's this? Yeah, Pretty tender? Yeah. yeah, give me just a second. Man, that stuff is just locked up. Yours, that's just this tight right there. Whatever you were doing, I was like, holy cow. Right in there, how's this? Uh, how's that? Is that too much? How's this on your arm right there? It the arm feels uh, like it's resting. How's the the knee right here? The knee's pretty good. Good. How's this? That's good. Yeah. Now, does this look like massage? Do you, do you want to see this in the Massage Envy ad? How's this right here? Is it too much? Uh, no. Arm? The arm is good. Knee? It's good. Good. I would love to see that in massage in the eye. <laughs> It'll happen one day, eventually. What if I give you some angle down this way? Is that too much? Uh, that's where I feel uh, Okay. More. So when I back off just a little bit right there, is that good? That's good. You see how I have to modify pressure from here? I have to use like my quads and my core and my legs to be able to hold this kind of pressure here. How's that? And I'm going to slowly give her a break there. Oh. Hey, Daniel. Oh. I need that. I, I, I. How do you think she'd feel after three hours? <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to get out. They they tip well. I've They're like, dude, I don't even know what that was. Like I felt like I got hit by a very loving train. <laughs> right How there. Long do you see um what I found over time when I did the longer sessions, do you like um I don't know your practice, Marcy. Do you do you deal with a lot of chronic pain stuff? I do. Do you get them like on a treatment plan where you see them once a week or something like that? Um, it depends on the client, but um, I once a week is they have to be really chronic. Chronic, yeah. That, um, it's usually every two, three weeks. Something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of the same. If they've had a chronic issue, the whole goal wasn't to create repeat clients for me. The goal was to like help you and help you so astoundingly in two or three sessions that you wrote a review that sounded like medical, like Jesus came and raised Lazarus from the dead, and then I got more clients that way. Yeah, that's then I would put them on maintenance, mm -hmm. and then I have some people who will see me you know, regularly, but I found that I could not, I didn't have to see them once a week. Every like two, if it was chronic, like t every two weeks for two or three sessions, and we just kind of chart their progress and see how they were doing after those, and then we could just sort of renegotiate as we went. That seemed to work for me. And how many sessions do you do? Two sessions a day? Usually, usually yeah, just two is max. Because um, that's six hours. That's a lot of work. Anymore. Yeah, that that's what I decided. Um, the other advantage I had because I had a home studio is somebody canceled my morning or my afternoon was free and it just wasn't a big deal. I would also take out my camera and shoot video or do other clerical tasks. How's that right there? What is that that is moving? I feel something moving. What here or here? No, no, uh, where your toe is when you push, push down I feel like a muscle moving. What is that? That's your paraspinals right there. Your erector spinae. You have to be strong too, right? Develops over time. As I work with you, if you know your buck 05, we're going to teach you how to use your whole buck 05. If you're 105 pounds, yeah. How's that in there? Good. So what do you usually charge for a session? Right now I charge $240 a session. Uh, before the end of the year, if business continues growing, I may up it to $300. Um, how many of you have like weird ethical issues with that? 
You're like, dude, $300 a session? What the hell? But well, it's for three hours. Yeah. It's three Absolutely. hours, and look how much training you have. Yeah. There's, there's no ethical issue there. So I had a young lady call me recently, and this is, this is how I dealt with it. I got into massage because I was in chronic pain. The medical establishment, legal establishment just threw me overboard almost. How's that right there? Is the pressure better there? A uh, little less. A little less? Right there? Is that better? There we go. So I'm going to hang out here for a second. You good? Nice. Um, I went to massage school because I couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford to receive massage as often as I wanted. It was the one thing that helped after my car accident. So I have a strong emotional resonance with people who need the help. This woman called me and she said, man, she had a laundry list, Marcy. She was one of those ones. I could tell she was anxious on the phone. She talked to me for 10 minutes about every you know, little piece of minutia. And I'm like, hey, listen, I need a, I need a full session with you. And she, I mean, she was like, how much is it? And I'm like, $240. And she's like, oh, I have $20,000 in medical bills. I said, okay, uh, time massage jam is tonight. It's five dollars. Have you guys heard about time massage jam? Mm -mm. Years ago in Austin, the massage community wasn't really supporting what I was doing. I couldn't get students like jobs. I was just starting to kick off my teaching practice and essentially what happened was I formed a community bodywork event I called time massage jam. I go to, right now, a karate studio on Thursday nights. I'll be there tomorrow night from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. I give, receive, teach, educate. The, the fee at the door is $5. I have massage therapists, the public, couples come in, they learn how to give and receive time massage from me in a public setting where I'm just kind of supervising. Everybody's laying around clothed on mats that I bring. Sounds like people won. Yeah, nice. Did she right come? there. Yes, she, she came the first night. I worked on her for an hour. She went from a seven to a two in that hour. Wow. She then showed up for six weeks every week at eight o'clock because she knew if she got there early, guess who was free? <laughs> and I continued to work on her for like four, you know, four sessions or so, like four weeks in a row. And then eventually I just passed her to somebody else and now other people are working on her. We just okay. keep, keep working on things, yeah. What, you offer that here in Houston? I'm only one person. I live three hours away. I'm trying to scale Time Massage Jam, which I do have the trademark for, nationwide. I want two chapters of Time Massage Jam in every major city in the United States, and I think I can do it. I'm getting the students to build a network with me where we facilitate mat-based practice and educate and show people what the work is. How's that right there? Pretty good. good. How's your neck? Good. Good. Probably pretty tight as well, right? Oh! Hey, what about this? How's that? Is that too much? No. There we go. Now, how much work does this seem like? No. When you learn how to do it, I think it's less work. There are moments when I feel guilty for what I charge because once you learn how to do it, I think it's easier than table-based work. I think it provides me more options. It makes me more mobile. Uh, I save money on cream and sheets. Uh, I don't know if I own any fitted sheets anymore. You know, they say how to fold a fitted sheet. I don't even want to learn. It's a flat sheet. People will complain on massage entrepreneurs about their laundry and they'll, they'll photograph like a big mountain pile. And I'll go up to my little stack of like eight or 10 flat sheets and go, that's my laundry for the week. And they're like, dude, you only use flat sheets. How do you do that? It's like, like this. How's that? You want more up to the base of the skull there? Uh, to the, there, there. Uh -huh. Hello, right there? Is it too much? No, yeah, it's good. It's okay. Just now, posterior or anterior? Posterior. Posterior, right there? Yeah. There we go. How's that? Ooh. There we go. And in your case as well, I'd probably check and work on some of this. How's this in here? Very tender? Yeah. And then through there again. Through your rotator cuff. They all love when I work on this. <laughs> Make them run around. It's either ticklish or kills them. Or both. Too much? It's I never felt ticklish and pain at the same time. How's that? <laughs> Ooh, this feels good. There we go. Usually they don't find this to be ticklish, so I can open this up just a little bit. I do use my hands and fingers still, but it's more like to like check stuff out. And then often I'll use like a bigger tool once I've, you know, 
figured out what's going on. I can use my knees or my feet. Do you have any training in um, Ashiatsu? No. Uh, Ashiatsu is, uh, man, I want to turn off the camera. Um, I'm not a big fan. What do you uh, think of it? I've never had it done, yeah. um, but I've seen it, and I, I don't know what to think of it because I've never felt it. So yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, I'm just wondering because you do work with your feet if you had any, if you had even taken any. Go ahead and stand up for me and tell me that feels. No, I haven't taken any classes in it, and I have a constant sort of rivalry uh, with the Ashiatsu community for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think the work. Really feel better? <coughs> yeah. This side feels a lot tighter. It feels like light on the right side, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing is with the uh, Ashiatsu community is I, s I feel a bit of a rivalry uh -huh. because they feel like they've solved the problem, and they've solved the problem by putting bars above the table and putting Swedish and deep tissue on steroids by using your legs and feet. Now, I like that they're saving massage therapist hands. <sighs> in our culture, massage is table cream, glide, and nudity. Mm -hmm. And I came in and got rid of the table, got rid of the cream, got rid of the glide, and got rid of the nudity. What did I have left? And I tell people some of the, <laughs> I tell people some of the best body work on earth. But it didn't resemble what the culture had. Now, is ashiatsu still table cream, glide, and nudity? And that's why it wins, because it still looks like massage. Mm -hmm. There are Ashiatsu practitioners on my subscription service. If they see this, don't get mad at me. Um, I've, I've talked to people in private who've said that they've had injuries from having their hands over their head, like holding onto the bars. Mm -hmm. The other challenge is you're stacking the bars above the table. And I'm not saying that ashiatsu in and of itself is unsafe. It really depends on the practitioner and their balance. But you're holding on to something and, and you've introduced lubricant on a heightened surface. Lots of practitioners are going in and doing this. They're trying to put bars above the mat. And they're trying to do some weird fusion of the two that I just really don't care for. Um, I'm not saying that ashiatsu is bad. And in fact, if you decide that you really want to do what consumers think of as massage, go study ashiatsu. And that's a positive thing I can say towards the ashi community. If you want to help people in chronic pain, I think what I do is far heads and above superior. You maximize mobility. You're maximizing safety because the person is on the mat. I think naturally they're more relaxed on a mat because they know they can't fall anywhere. Mm -hmm. And you maximize compression. Do you ever put the mat <clears throat> on um, like a, like I want to say like a table in, in case your client can't get all the way down to the So yeah, I can get a table if, if I need it, but I don't typically um, market myself to like an older cool. clientele. But I'm not really talking about like a massage table. Yeah. But I'm talking about, because if somebody is like... Oh, I see like what that. you're saying. Like I, a platform. Yeah, I'd have to figure out what kind of platform, but those sorts of hybridizations, if people want to do that, it's completely fine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just a diehard map based practitioner, and I decided to use that in my marketing. I think this is a far more versatile platform than the table. Now, that being said, I still teach table work. People keep asking me about my subscription service. There's tons of table stuff. I teach it again and again and again and again and again. And what happens when I teach table tie, the students get on the table. Mm -hmm. I don't tell them to, but they start to figure out how I'm using body weight and they, they're like, well, I want more. And they get up on the table and then I go, you're doing mat work, you're doing mat work, you're doing mat work. And I tease them mm -hmm. because there are some times where they'll take the table tie because they're like, no, I want to do it on a table. And then they want to do mat work. And then some of the people will do mat based work mm -hmm. and then realize, oh man, I can't go back to my job and do this. They don't allow, you know, mat-based work. Now, that being said about Ashiatsu, can we play that video in just a second? Yeah. yeah let me turn this off real quick. Now, where do you get that mat? Um, I bought it from a company that is now defunct.